Welcome to Gut Talk TV by DAB, a YouTube channel focused on closing the communication and knowledge gaps in gut health. Please see our disclaimer and press the subscribe button below. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Jake Begun. Hello, I'm Dr. Yunnan. We are gastroenterologists from Australia. And today we're going to be talking about dietary management of irritable bowel syndrome. And we've invited our dietitian Dwayne here to share his knowledge with us. Hi, I'm Dwayne. I'm an accredited practicing dietitian working as a specialist dietitian in gastroenterology. Excellent. So in the previous video, we talked about irritable bowel syndrome and different man management approach. Mm -hmm. And I think today we'll discuss about how to modify the diet, which is patients the most interest part of managing their IBS. So can you just walk through how, what's your usual approach on patients with IBS? Yeah, so diet can be quite an uh, important factor in terms of managing IBS and um, a lot of people do seek uh, some dietary changes. Um, and what's important to know is that with IBS, it can range from person to person and some people find that they've got quite mild symptoms while some people have quite severe symptoms um, which can impact a lot of aspects of their life and so with that being said it's important that we approach every individual um, uniquely um, and it would be dietary advice would be based on what we believe that they need at the time. Mm -hmm. And in terms of some general advice with regard to foods and types of foods that might set people off, are there some general advice that you can give to our patients? Yeah, definitely. So as a dietitian, what we normally would look into for people with IBS, um, sometimes we call it a first line approach and that looks into the types of foods that we eat and also how we eat our food as well. So uh, what we first look into is sometimes food triggers and that could be things like food chem uh, caffeine, um, alcohol, spicy foods and fatty foods and what we know is that these foods can cause um, changes on our gut such as changes in gut motility and also cause things like gas and pain. So sometimes reducing or limiting these type of foods can help with relieving certain symptoms. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people also ask about fibre supplements and what's the correct of doing it, is it really helpful with IBS? Is that any comment that you do to your patients? Yeah, so fibre is quite important, uh, particularly with IBS, and so sometimes what we look into is the amount of fibres that we're consuming and also the type of fibres that we're consuming mm -hmm. as well. So uh, what we might look into is sometimes um, whether or not we're spreading out our fibre across the day, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that we're choosing different types of fibres because some fibres can actually cause gas production. And so if you find that you may not be getting enough fibre in the day, it may be useful to best talk to a dietitian about how to increase your fibre without having to um, produce a lot of gas and therefore uh, exacerbate some of those IBS symptoms. Mm -hmm. You mentioned in there about um, how we eat, and so are there ways that we should space out meals that you would recommend? Should we be skipping meals? How should we be making that? <laughs> Definitely. So how we eat can make a really big impact on in terms of our gut and the response in our gut as well. Once the stomach is uh, filled with some food, it sends some chemicals to our gut, sensing that there is something coming. And so what we do encourage that people are having regular meals um, and also taking into consideration how we're eating our meals, are we sitting down or are we running around to the next meeting and eating our food? So taking your time to sit down, chew your food really well and also um, making sure that we're having regular meals can be important as well. Mm -hmm. And also, um, a lot of people are talking about um, avoiding gluten that might help with their improving their symptoms. Yeah. Um, what's your experience with that? Yeah, so gluten can be quite a popular thing for people with IBS, and so we find that a lot of people would remove gluten from their diet and they find uh, some reduced symptoms. Um, what we do know now is that through clinical research is that it is actually a highly fermentable carbohydrate or sugar called fructin, mm -hmm. which is also found in gluten containing foods that is causing IBS symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than uh, removing gluten from your diet, it may be worth talking to a dietitian about um, seeing whether or not there could be another diet they could do mm -hmm. to help with relieving these symptoms. Mm -hmm. In addition to gluten, I think I hear from a lot of my patients that lactose can sometimes cause a problem for them. Is lactose avoidance a thing that you would recommend for some? Patients? Yeah, so obvious. There's a lot of people that have um, a lactose intolerance, um, and uh, rather than removing dairy from your diet, which is a quite important food group um, in your diet, what we would recommend is something like using a lactose-free option, um, which and a calcium-fortified plant-based um, dairy option as well. Mm -hmm. And just also note that in addition to what you said, lactose is not harmful. So a lot of people are confused about, oh, I should absolutely avoid everything, but it's good to have some lactose in you with the calcium supplements mm -hmm. rise. So it's good to have it if your symptoms can manage low dose. Definitely, yeah. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
Well, terrific. Thank you very much for coming in and chatting to no us worries. about the diet Thanks and IBS. So. We are going to spend a little bit more time talking about low FODMAP diets, which are another important aspect. So see our video on low FODMAP diets as well. Mm -hmm. I hope you find our resources useful today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and we'll try to address that. Thank you very much.